Morning, guys. Oh. That's last night's print. Hi guys, little project here, inspired by a kit that I saw in a charity shop, uh, one of those science kits, and also by the fact that somebody shoved that tin, or can, into my hedge at the front of the garden. So that isn't me drinking that, although I have drunk that stuff in the past, it's just it was a gift. <laughs> so I put two two things together. The inspiration from the charity shop kit and what's been dumped in my hedge. So the idea is it's a noisy, uh, vibrating, well, what I'd have called a bristle bot. We need a vibrating motor. This comes out of an old toothbrush. It's got an offset weight on it so that when it spins round it vibrates. In fact, this particular one, you can vaguely see it's got a red cross on it because it's one that I'd um, killed at some time in the past. But I've replaced the brushes on it and it seems to work. We've got a tin. Uh, don't know if that battery will be enough, but it might work. Bit of wire. Got some paper clips in there, which we'll use for the legs. And we got some googly eyes. I spent ages looking for them in my stock because I knew I'd got some. And they're in the wrong box. That's supposed to be my size 64 rubber bands in there. But for some reason, that's where my googly eyes are. Or wiggly eyes. And then the bits that I 3D printed. You need to trim them up a little bit, but the idea is that will fit over there. It'll be a good tight fit, but it will fit in a minute. It will fit with something to hold the battery in place. And then that one, likewise, it will fit. It's a tight fit, but it will fit, and that will hold the motor. Actually, that's a little bit looser than intended, but I can always put a bit of tape on there or something. So I'll trim these up. They've got holes in there for the paper clips to go in for the legs. And a couple at the top for the eyes or the whatever you want to call them. Feelers. Yeah, I'll tidy this up and we'll put it together. Right, that's me new my two plastic rings in place, or PLA. I need to solder some wires onto here. The other end of the wires, I think I'll solder them onto some magnets so we can just clip the magnets on there to make contact. So that's an easy way to do it. So we need one to be about that long. And the other one can be a bit shorter. I don't know, if I make them both the same length, if I need to swap them over, reverse the direction, we can do that. So I'll say, I've, I've got some magnets that I've used before that I've just soldered directly onto them. It doesn't do the magnet a lot of good, but they're still plenty strong enough to actually hold and make contact on the battery. As long as the battery's got the right sort of terminals, some of them are non-magnetic. Uh, but I'm pretty sure these ones are all right. And then we need to bend up some legs. I 
I've actually designed the holes in here. They're slightly oval shaped. I'm hoping I can bend these over. Yes, they are. They're going to fit in there like that. There we go. So the legs. We can adjust how we want in a minute. But just for now, we'll do something like that. So I'll do four like that. You don't need to watch me do all four. Okay, all up together. Um, I tried it with an ordinary one and a half volt battery and it really wasn't powerful enough. So at the moment, I've got one of my lithium ion batteries in there, which are three and a half volts or 3.7 volts. which is noisy, which was the purpose of the exercise, but it's not moving very much. So we'll just try adjusting the legs a bit, see if we can get any more movement out of it. Hmm. It may be these are too flexible and they're absorbing the vibration. Or we may need more weight at the back to make it vibrate. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a noisy bug, but I do want it to move. Uh... Right, that was the difference. Straightening the legs up. So they weren't absor absorbing the vibration. When they were out, they were absorbing the vibration and it wasn't moving. But I think we may be overpowering it. I'll try it with an ordinary AA battery again.
looks like that could do with tightening up a bit. I just think a little bit of tape around it will thicken it up enough to make it stick in there. All right, put a little bit of sticky tape around the motor just to thicken it a bit so it's a tighter fit. I did the same with the battery because the battery was sliding around as well. Oh. That's made it quite a bit quieter because it's not, not sliding around so much. Right, these fellows I put on the back in the hope that they might add to the noise a bit. But they don't seem to be doing very much. They may be too light. just show you what I was talking about that's just small magnets soldered direct, directly onto the end of the wires it doesn't do the magnets any good but as I say they're still strong enough to actually make contact for me I'll just get the metal tray to make it even louder or at least I think it'll make it louder not much louder Adjust the camera a little bit. Just by adjusting the angle of the legs, we get different movement each time.
<laughs> On how straight it will go on the floor. Why is it attracted to that? What a little beauty. I never expected that much motion out of it. That is going so much better than I expected. Wow. And that's an ordinary one and a half volt battery. I'm not touching it, it's entirely random. Well, that'll do. It works. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel, and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.